All right, so section three of acceptance, we're gonna be talking about some of the things that get in the way or prevent us from being able to apply it. The first one, as you can imagine, we've been talking about this is when we're being judgmental of our children. And so we're putting what we think is right, wrong, good, bad, our values on them in situations where we're trying to engage them, work through change or work through a conflict or a difficult conversation. When we apply that judgment, is gonna cause us not to have acceptance. So we need to make sure that we are allowing that space to have acceptance and not judgment. This also might be where we're being critical of them and we're being too hard on them and think then that they should be able to do something more beyond their skills, abilities, or knowledge. We need to be able to recognize where they're truly at and not judge that and have acceptance for where they are with their skill level, knowledge, abilities. Another area that can cause some problems is when we think our children are an extension of us or that they owe us something. Our children don't owe us anything. We can accept who they are and what they are. They are an individual. They're a human being. They aren't just a mini-me. They are an autonomous individual and would need to be treated as such. Um, outside of the fact that we're going to keep them safe and make sure that harm doesn't come to them, deal with emergencies, right? So we're going to make sure that they have that safe environment. They're not going to have harm. Outside of that, we recognize that they are autonomous, that they can make choices and they will make choices. And so we want to engage with them in a way that we're guiding them to understand their environment and ways to be successful and have good outcomes. If we do think they're an extension of us, what's often going to happen is that when they do something we personally don't agree with or it embarrasses us, we then get very reactive and start judging them and become critical and that can really hurt a relationship. The next piece, we kind of talked about this already as well in the last video, is when we put value to be contingent on their actions. So if they don't get an A in school, for example, and so now they don't have as much value and we treat them as such that they now aren't as great a kid, well, they're just as great a kid, just their actions didn't get an A. And that's just something we're going to talk about. It's just a behavior. It's just things that happen. And so we'll discuss it, but we're not going to put value on them because of it. The next piece that can get in the way of acceptance is when we're doing consequences or discipline. And if we do it without having absolute worth for the child. In other words, if we're trying to drive fear, guilt, hurt, shame to the child, when we're doing discipline or consequences, we're really going to lose that beautifulness of acceptance and absolute worth. The child, when we do discipline consequences, we're not trying to convey any of those things. What we're trying to convey is that there's something that they did that can create an unsafe environment or harm or an outcome that can be uh, not good, right? Or cause issues or problems. And so we want a guide to help them understand, not try to drive hurt, harm, or fear. And so we want them to feel a safe environment when we go to do any of those consequences. And we want to still convey they have absolute worth when we are consequencing or doing discipline. The next one that could get in the way is when we feel like we have to control the child or the situation. This is when we feel like something has to happen a very specific way and not recognizing there's actually many other ways that can be done. As long as no one's getting hurt, no problems are going to happen and no one, no emergency situations are going to come out of it. As long as it's not doing that, why can't there be another way? We don't have to try to control it. What we want to do is guide it and help them understand the different options and maybe have them look at what might be an outcome if they choose to go down the path that they're going down. So if we feel like we have to control it, we'll more than likely drop acceptance and then we become more controlling with the child. Next is when we expect more out of our child than where their skills, abilities, or knowledge is. We talked about this before, but it's really important to look at where are they really? Now, it doesn't mean that we don't challenge them a little bit. That's a good thing. You know, it's stretch goal, something that takes them a little bit further. But if remembering the marathon scenario or example, if I want to treat someone that can run around the block and that's as good as they can do right now and try to get them to run a marathon, they're going to fail horribly. So I want to treat them exactly where their skills, abilities, and knowledge is at. 
And if I treat them that way and look at where they can grow from there, I'm more likely to have acceptance applying it and have a better relationship and better outcomes. But if I think that, oh my goodness, you should be able to clean your bedroom. You should be able to do your homework. I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on a child that's not gonna be very successful and it's only gonna hinder your relationship and cause conflict. Whereas that conflict doesn't need to necessarily be there because we can be open, we can accept the situation and then look at where are their skills and see where we need to help guide and grow them. The next piece that can get in the way of acceptance is when we focus too much on their weaknesses or their humanness. And when we do that, it starts to tear someone down. We're all human, we all have weaknesses and we all have strengths. Acceptance recognizes that you're human, right? And with that humanness, you're gonna have weaknesses and strengths. I accept both. I accept a child for everything they are, for both acceptance of the weakness and the strength. And when you can accept both, but put focus on the strength, the child will grow faster and be more connected with you. So we wanna focus in on that strength and grow the strength, see where it can go. The weaknesses, if they're not causing harm or other issues, we might highlight them and see what they might wanna do about them, but really where we wanna put most of our focus is on the strength. Another one that I've seen that's gotten away is when parents feel like they have to control the anger of a child. We all get angry, we all get frustrated, we have our heated moments. And so if a child starts getting angry and frustrated, normally the best thing to do is allow them a space to cool down. Um, in my home, I call that the timeout. It's not a punishment, it's not a consequence, it's just a place to cool down and a timeout. So I'll let them go to their room and just settle down for a while and then we'll re-engage again once they've calmed down. But sometimes parents feel like they have to control that anger and so then they'll tell the child that they have to stop being angry and try to stifle it. Well, the child's not gonna engage that way, right? What's gonna happen is you're gonna have to drive the fear so high to get that anger to stop that the child by the end is gonna be so disengaged with you and the relationship's gonna suffer. So we don't need to control the anger. What we need to do is keep it at a safe place and allow a space for them to calm down appropriately. And then we can re-engage. The last one we're gonna talk about is being reactive. When we're reactive to what a child does and says, we're really gonna lose acceptance and it's gonna again damage the relationship. For example, one that I've seen that parents get really reactive about is a child when they say whatever, or they might say, you don't know what you're talking about. Right, when they say these kinds of things, there's a reason why they're saying it. Something's going on internally, and if we react to it and get upset and then get mad at them, what it's gonna do is it's actually going to increase the likelihood that behavior will continue. What we wanna do is we wanna engage them and look at what's going on, what's actually behind that statement that they felt like they needed to say that. So we're not wanting to react to situations. And that's not easy to do. What we wanna do is if you feel yourself get upset or what I call like your blood pressure going up and you're feeling frustrated, you put yourself in timeout. In fact, I give my kids permission to even tell me that I need to go on timeout when I'm getting too upset. But the key here is, is not to add fuel to the fire. When the kids do things to get a reaction out of us, it's best not to react. If it's something that triggers you, then remember to just say, you know what, I think you need to go to your room to cool down for a little bit and I'm gonna go cool down for a little bit and we'll talk later, right? So you can step away from the situation and when you feel that you're not reactive anymore and calm, that's the time to go back and re-engage and then discover what was going on. Why did they say what they said? What made them so angry? Why did they feel like they needed to communicate that way? And when you converse that way, you can start finding out what's really going on, reconnect with your child and find a better way to communicate next time. So those are just a few of the roadblocks you might find with acceptance. There's many others out there, but this just gives you an idea of what to look for.